Sarah. Hey, Judy. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. When's the last time I saw you? I was thinking about this earlier today. I know. It's been like, I think since school. Back. So like 20 years? No. <laughs> 15 years? Oh my God. It's amazing. Right? Just how time flies. Craziness. Craziness. So you're in what? New York? Ooh, I I'm actually in Canada. You're in Canada. Okay. We're in Canada. I'm in Vancouver. In v Vancouver. Oh, so you're, you're West Coast then. I am on the West Coast. Okay. I kept thinking you're on the East Coast. So I kept telling you 830 Eastern, but <laughs> 530 and Pacific. Right time. When I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I ask all of my guests, Judy. So how did you get started with the violin? Were you like one of those... I know you were one of those amazing kids, but how did you actually start? Was it something that your your mom pushed you into or something that you were interested in? So what, what's your origin story? I've always wondered. Yeah, I mean, I really... Ooh, I can't hear you. Come closer. Okay. I'm, like I'm a little closer now. Is that better? Yes, I can totally hear you. Okay, start over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, my mom always wanted to play violin. She never had the opportunity. So, um, I guess you know she had classical music playing in the in the house all the time, and I had an inclination to listening to it. Um, I guess I, I was I was interested in playing. My first lesson was about four. Pretty much. Oh. You're cutting out again. You're cutting out. Sorry. Is this better? Or is this better? I don't know. Yeah, okay. L let's try that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just started about four. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no. I'm going to get really close. You're going to get better? really close. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> it is. Don't move. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's just like scary because it's like super. I know. This is like hi. <laughs> hi. Blemishes. Yeah. So um, yeah, basically, um, I just started when I was four years old, and it was pretty smooth sailing. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed playing. Um, I wasn't really pushed into it mm -hmm. per se. Um, I think it just kind of was one of the things where I felt like it was something that I just did, and I. Um, I, I didn't like I wasn't particularly a huge practice person per se mm -hmm. like, by doing that part but I did love performing um, mm -hmm. so that's what sort of like kept me going mm -hmm. so, yeah who do you um what's the first concert you remember watching uh, that well, you were inspired by or just any the first concert yeah that's great um I, there were a few uh, performers that came to Edmonton which is where I grew up in in mm -hmm. Canada and I used to pl uh go to the Edmonton Symphony concerts uh, because my teacher was actually the concert master of, of the symphony, James Keene. And so I would go and listen to a lot of performers. Um, people that come to mind are Cholan Lin, Jimmy Lin, mm -hmm. and uh, Joshua Bell was another one mm -hmm. I had a crush on, as all of us probably did as a kid. Um, so those two kind of like stuck with me. But to be honest, um, I think I really just took to like uh, the old recordings. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would listen to like Yasha Heifetz and Nathan Milstein and mm -hmm. um, Sharing and uh, Elman. And mm -hmm. yeah, it, those were really what um, were distinct to me because I, I think I just recognized like not, you know, taking away from the modern day performers at all is a personal taste that I just loved um, hearing, I think, just like the different style and distinctive styles that they had and it was just and I love that era I think just like the mm -hmm. old yeah so, I feel yeah. like that the old school kind of playing had a different sense of time like it, it wasn't as rigid in a way and there's just a, a way of expression that's that's completely different so was that sort of what was attractive to you in terms of like that style of playing Yes. I mean, I think I really love the rubatos taken and like the freedom. And even to this day, I, I feel just so inclined to like when I'm watching like the old um, movies of that era as well. Mm -hmm. Like I really listen to like the sound, the soundtracks. And I'm like, you know what, there really isn't a distinction in my, you know, just stylistically when I listen to like um, the, the music that was being 
created by uh, Chrysler and, you know, like uh, Sarasate and like the, mm -hmm. uh, during that time with like the soundtracks of that time, you know, with Bernstein and, you know, I just feel like there was just such a, a more similar, similar sort of vibe, very, mm -hmm. the romantic period, you know. Um, and when I listen to that too, I'm just like, you know, there's just so much nuance and like just like freedom and uh, just like a sort of sense of personal kind of, mm -hmm. I'm like I, I can really like distinguish, like, you know, when you listen to them, you're like, oh yeah, like that's so-and-so. And, you know, just like, and I think it's just such a, you know, again, it's, it's personal taste, but I just always found that to be very inspiring. And I think that it, I just took to like, just having that sort of appreciation of like, you know, not necessarily feeling like I have to like be listening to like, just like looking at the music and just like listening to what I hear and copy, mm. you know, like I, I'm not imitating, but I'm just like, okay, I'm going to come up with what I feel in the moment with it and just kind of like to, to that sort of personal inspiration. I like that personal inspiration. Um, so, and then when did you start Curtis? You were, you were super young. I was 11 when I, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, it was, it was young in the sense that, yes, I feel like looking back, I think I would have taken so much more like out of it, like if I was more, you know, like, I, you know, this is, you go back to your past and you always like look at it in a different, in mm -hmm, retro, mm -hmm. but it's like so much that I could like, I think learned more and been more, um, what is the word? Like, I don't want to say taking granted, like I didn't take anything for granted per se, mm -hmm. but it's like, I think I would have just like appreciated so much more and understood certain things. But um, at the same time, I really like, I can't, you know, complain because <laughs> like it's just such a honor to have been there so so what what's your like I can't imagine going into conservatory at 11 so I mean all these students who are you know in large part much older than you are so were you intimidated was it a scary experience or did you feel like this was the logical next step into what you were doing I didn't feel intimidated per se I felt like to be honest like I, I had like such support around me like I feel like just as far as even the students like you know colleagues um I didn't feel like I was like left out per se you know like I, I had friends and like I, I would consider people like my older brother or older sister um and yeah I just I felt quite comfortable as as far as that goes um yeah I think it's just kind of like I took it for what it was I mean mm -hmm. I had had strict teachers like the my first teacher compared to the teacher I had in Edmonton was it was a completely different thing because he like basically took me back to like the basics mm -hmm. when I was studying in Edmonton I did go through some of the things that you know you know the scales and this and that but it wasn't very thorough it was kind of like mm. I was kind of a lot because it was just like oh wow like you're like advancing okay let's just skip this let's just go straight to that you know but then it's like you, you realize later that maybe you need to kind of like you know polish things up and so he took a very different approach so in that in that case I was like learning music uh, like I would learn a concerto within three days like had twice a week lessons and I would learn like a full concerto memorized in three days and I was sort of like able to do it actually but it just felt like there came a point where I think I did feel kind of like, well, you know what, I'm not really enjoying this as much as I feel like I want to be. It was a thing. So I just kind of like, you know, I think it comes with the age that I was at too. Like, you know, when you're like 12, 13, go into like this different phase of like, oh, I just want to like go out and hang out and have fun. And I, mm -hmm. and I was able to do that as well, thankfully. But it was sort of like this rebellious, like, yeah, I don't feel like practicing today. So I'm just going to like not actually practice <laughs> <laughs> other things like more enjoyable and so I think there was a period where I just kind of like did have like a, a point where I just wanted to like have something new and so I actually like ended up um just seeing if there was like some another teacher that you know maybe was a better fit and it was just mm -hmm. more better fit sort of situation and so um and he, like compared to the first teacher it was like super like it, it just felt like a super less strict like that like it and he's considered strict too so I was like wow like you know it's like that's how strict my first teacher was but 
I took a lot from that too, because I ended up learning things very quickly. And, and it's like, to this day, I can kind of just like, um, which is not always a good thing, but you know, just kind of like you get used to like, just taking shortcuts and which is, um, you know, I, I'm all about like, efficiency, but it's like skipping steps as well as like, you know, you have to like, make sure you're doing it correctly. So it's like, mm -hmm. a yeah, that's a delicate balance. But I, I like this idea of at some point, you actually had to go back to basics again and sort of, you know, polish that up, as you said, because that, that's sort of where everything, you know, your foundation comes from. And I always think of you as just this really natural player and just, you know, you, you've got this great foundation and it's just, you, you know, um, that's a really great way to approach it. So you, you work hard until you were 17, then you went off to, so when did this sort of shift in you happen in terms of thinking that, you know, playing the violin is not just about playing concertos or sonatas or, you know, doing a, a conventional sort of, you know, linear, you know, from Curtis to Juilliard and, and having this career to maybe it could be something completely different. Did that shift happen purposely or did it kind of happen gradually? Um, it actually was. Ooh, closer, closer. Come right. closer. <laughs> I just want to Come closer. Entire, so I was like, I'm going to place it down. Okay. Um, better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just wanted to sort of, gra like, I gradually found, uh, like, things that I would do to, you know, collaborate with artists um, and um, play music that I, you know, would just outside of the classical genre. And, you know, but I think that a lot of it was, it started from actually when I was um, pretty young. Um, I grew up kind of, um, again, like I said, I didn't really warm up with scales per se and things like that. So I would like listen to a, a piece, like, you know, just even like a classical piece that I never played. And I would just play by ear. And I would, and I, perf I, I would always be like a perform, like when I practiced, it was always like performing, like, I, cause that's what I, I enjoyed. So I would like, I didn't practice, uh, I started practicing like on my own since I was pretty young, like seven or eight. And so I would just kind of like go to the bathroom or something just with the acoustics and kind of pretend like I'm practicing. Playing. And so all that to say that, yeah, I think I started just like improvising and making up melodies um, as a kid as a warm up. That was sort of like mm. the way I just started. And it kind of stuck with me because it's just something that I think, you know, how you are, what your background and what you're exposed to is really a big um, factor. So like when I was, uh, especially as a kid, so like when I was um, listening to classical music as, at home I wasn't always listening to classical for fun it was it would be like pop music like radio you know just would be on um so I I would just like have that as well like just the influence of, of that uh so I think that once I was at Curtis I definitely felt like maybe in the latter years like when I was about 16 I went to Ravinia I remember Ravinia Festival Skeen mm -hmm. Institute and I was about 16 I think and I remember like just fooling around in the practice room with like a friend, like a pianist, and we would just start playing like random like pop songs just for fun. And it became this thing of like klezmer and like all this. And then it's like we started this thing like kind of just randomly, like I was playing it and then like someone else came and like listened to us. And then they started like joining in and I was like, yes, and this this whole party like kind of like mm -hmm. happening in this practice room in Stings Institute. Um, and then it ended up being like a concert at the end of the summer. So it was like this extra sort of like concert just to like do random like on like, yeah, improvisation and things like that. And so I just feel like it was one of those things that happened because of just the passion that I had for being um, outside. I guess it was like, it was just being me, you know, cause like when you're in the, in the classical world as you play um, relate, um, you sometimes do feel like your identity is always just attached to being a, a you know, violinist conductor or a classical musician, whatever, right? And so it's like, I think I've always struggled with this, this feeling of like, I don't want to just be the violinist. Like, everyone's like, oh, that's the violinist. And it's like, oh, she's the violinist. And like, no, I'm actually, like, I got used to it. So I'd be like, like, I'd nod, but then inside, I would never feel quite like 100% like, mm. happy about it. I'd be like, that's just, that's not the only thing I am. And so I think I, it was just this like sort of yearning to like make me like connect with like my full identity. And so it really stems from that, like just like feeling like, okay, like there's so much more to like 
what my interests and my passions and what I want to express. And so that really started to like bloom as soon as I went to New York, because obviously that's the place where, you know, it's all available. You go to, mm-hmm. Like I went, like my first year, I went to like, um, just like random clubs downtown and just got in and played and literally just was like, hey, like, you don't know me, I don't know you, but do you, if you need a violinist, do you want me to like just jump? And they were like, yeah, sure. And then like, I literally just jump on stage and play with them. And, and then I just started slowly making connections with uh, people there in a community, building a community with um, just indie artists and like, um, and that kind of led to like, I think just meeting more people and and kind of just getting more opportunities. And um, so it just, it, like I didn't expect, I don't, I wasn't looking for like a career change per se or like anything that, it was just more for like a passion that I I had to like express. And so it's just a natural transition in my sort of perspective. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that sounds like really organic. If you grew up listening to, you know, these other genres of music and what kind of pop did you listen to as a kid? I mean, you know, like the, like the nineties and the eighties, you know, it's like all of the stuff um, that was probably on the radio. And also my cousins uh, that I grew up with um, a bit older than me. So it'd be like stuff they listened to and they would, and like, they would watch music videos and mm-hmm. I'm sitting there watching with them and hanging out. And so it was just like, I, I actually end up like listening more to like not class school for for leisure um and it's something that you know it's like I, I definitely feel like to this day like I'm not I, like on either side of it though so it's, mm-hmm. I, I don't feel more pop than more classical I just sort of feel like the two can kind of like um exist like you know together and and I just kind of like integrate into both um just kind of like doing you know whatever I feel in the moment that is like enjoyable and not Mm -hmm. feeling like I have to be categorized into like one or the other Mm -hmm. so yeah I mean it's interesting because even like a generation ago like it was you know very cut and dried it's like you're you're the one thing or the other but now yeah as you said it's much more integrated and like those things can coexist and I like this whole idea that that's more authentic to who you are and how you self-identify which I think is like the most important thing we do as artists right is to find that authentic self and to be able to express that so (laughs) I love to hear that so like I mean that takes like a lot of I don't know courage from my perspective to show up in a club and be like hey I'm just I'm gonna play the violin (laughs) I know you know what's strange is like at the time I think I I was just so like it wasn't even like a thing where I was like oh I'm like scared like because usually that's that's how I am I'm a very shy person so I'm not like I, I would think twice think keep overthinking it and be like no nah, like I'm not going to do it but I think it was one of those things where I just had this such an urge urgency to do it that I just kind of was like yeah I'm going to do it and funny enough now I find myself not having that same sort of like <laughs> like I don't know what changed but it's like and now I'm just kind of like ah like I want to but I'm like and I overthink it but before I was just like I don't care like I'm just gonna whether they say yes or no it's like I didn't really care and I think that's really in a weird way what kind of like you know, because I, I, I'm not really into, like, thinking of, of, like, oh, well, you need to, like, I don't know how to explain it right now, but, like, you know, this whole philosophy of, like, well, if you keep, like, if you really want something, you go for it, it's going to happen. Like, I never really had that type of mindset. Mm-hmm. I think I'm kind of losing my thought. But, yeah, like, so at the time, it was just more, like, an organic thing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. now I, I realize, looking back, that it was, like, I was doing that, but not, like, kind of thinking, like, that was a formula I had to, like, get through to like do it Mm -hmm. whereas now it's like they talk about like you know like because of the whole like uh social media um Mm -hmm. thing now there's so many like inspirational quotes and do this and you're gonna get this and stay positive Mm -hmm. and have a positive mindset and I think that I never never really felt like I had to like do that like like sort of in a very um uh mechanical manner Mm -hmm. but it was Mm -hmm. just kind of like but it's true when you look back, you're like, you actually do these things and maybe they manifest. Like you, there's different ways mm-hmm, to say it, but mm-hmm. like you manifest and it happens mm-hmm. or whatever it, the words are. But yeah, so I think there is something to be said of like maybe um, like really putting yourself out there does something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess, yeah, like somehow like, it's <laughs> like, uh, like being able to just do it without feeling forced really help because I'm not mm-hmm. like, I can't do things that are forced or mechanical. It just is not sort of the way I work, but yeah, I don't know why I was on that tangent, but <laughs> no, no, but that that's really interesting. I mean, just to hear that you're a shy person, I, I see you on stage and you're just so, 
I mean, you have such a sense of self and you just, you present yourself in a way that you wouldn't even imagine that you're shy. And I think a lot of people have a misimpression about musicians being on stage and being that exactly. person and being that performer. And like, that's not entirely who they might be off stage as well. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like then you approach this whole thing with going into clubs and finding these ways to interact with artists of different genres, like as if you didn't have a goal in mind, but you're sort of following your curiosity mm -hmm. and sort yeah. of discovering things. Would you say that's, that's more the case? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, I didn't have necessary goals. And I think that's exactly what ties it together with what, what I just said is that like the whole, like, in, like being intentional about doing something to manifest it, there's a goal in mind. But I think for me, the goal was really just to, to express this, this part of me that I wasn't able to, or I didn't feel like, um, I don't want to say able to, because like in classical music, you definitely are able to express so much. But I think it's just like uh, this sense of like, you're, you're interpreting someone else's work. Whereas when you feel like you're just kind of creating something in the moment, it's really just st stemming from this inspiration of just like, I, you know, things that are just flowing and there's no thought and it's just a different approach. Whereas like mm. classical, there is more like of a thought and kind of like there's studying and all of this behind it. Um, so I think that just having the balance of both, like, like mm. I could never like ever neglect classical music, like never feel like I, I'm done with it. It's, it's one of those things that you're just, it's always like you're going to be discovering new things and always getting, uh, wanting to be better at, but I think it's definitely it's just a different sort of like craft like like you're you're you know you're you're literally just like studying um and and analyzing versus composing in the moment and just mm -hmm. letting go and not mm -hmm. thinking and you know it's just two different things so which are like actually connected but just in a different way so so I wonder so if you talk about the classic repertoire which you do have to like study and learn and yeah. practice but when you get to the point of performance, is that, do you, are you able to sort of shed all that stuff and really be in the moment? So is it that different from performing other stuff or is it different for you? I don't know. It's actually, that's a good question because you, you study and you, you do all of that stuff in the practice room. But once you're on stage, you really do have to kind of like stop the brain, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and then you just kind of have to, um, <laughs> give it up yeah mm -hmm. in, in the moment and that's what the thing I love about performing is because when I'm practicing maybe it is where it's like for whatever reason I'm just like in a different mindset it's like I mean I, I do not to say like I totally like anti like hate it or whatever but it's like <laughs> it's very different because you're not playing for like there's not an audience or you're not feeling like this uh, the vibe that the concert mm -hmm. gives and once you're there, it's just like there's a different like feeling. There's a different like energy that's happening, mm -hmm. and it's almost like you're not even like in control fully. Like, in which I love. So I actually do find that like I'll start like doing stuff I've never done in the practice room on stage, and sometimes mm -hmm. to the point where it's like I'm taking almost too many risks mm -hmm. that I'll just kind of like maybe flub it up or something if I'm not safe, and I'll just be like, oh okay, like. But it's like I'm not always upset about it because I. I feel like it, it was like where the music was taking me, where that, mm -hmm. that moment was taking me. So it's, mm -hmm. it's me being authentic in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, each performance, you like the whole thing is to like maybe go, okay, well, you take from that last performance and go, well, it, it, I do want to take that risk. And I have the uh, opportunity to do that the next time. But this time maybe I could learn that there's like things you do to tweak that and to, to like be able to be more prepared to for those risks or whatever mm -hmm. it is so it's always a learning situation i mean like i always find that performances are the best places to practice mm -hmm. like, I, like I, always, I always think like if every single person was in this world was given an opportunity to perform like all the time like like in an ideal world we would all be so much better players. I really believe that because mm. it's, it just seems like that is like the place where everything is so much more heightened and, and like everything is so like under a microscope, like, like I hear things better when I'm there. It's like, you know, and you're just in this, like, it's whatever it is, it's like the science behind it or whatever you want to call it. It's like, you're just in this type of um, environment where everything is very like just, 
but yeah like I don't know how to explain it right now but mm-hmm. yeah you know what I mean no I, I yeah. do know what you mean because I think you get you know in that moment of performance everything yeah. as you said is heightened so for me I get so much more focused right that's, because that's I it. see it like yeah. right in that's front it. of me yeah. and like right. you have to sort of make it work and and for me yeah. kind of time slows down or time ceases yeah. to exist in a way yeah, because exactly. you're yeah. sort of in a flow zone mm-hmm. and yeah you're right about being able to I think you're more able to take risks within that space because you do have this this focus and this time sort of wandering around you and that's a, a wonderful place to learn um yeah. I hadn't thought about like learning while you're performing but that that's so true it's that's so that's true. A really like yeah. like it's not ideal to do that per se well, because you're performing yeah but actually like you know it's it's one of those things for on your own journey like you like I always find if I play on tour and I'm doing like five recitals in a row you just see such an improvement from the first concert to the fifth mm-hmm. and it just like everything is just so different on that journey whereas like on the first like just one time that you perform a concerto like it's just going to be a different thing when you perform mm-hmm. it the, like the the next time and the next time after that so yeah. it's always like there's a starting point for everything um but yeah i always think that and i i just i just love like just like being able to i think like yeah when you're like connecting with like some like other energies mm-hmm. that's what brings out things that you're like like you don't discover when you're just like in your own space Mm-hmm, like you're just mm-hmm. like yeah there's like like inspiration like flowing from like all sources around you mm-hmm, too. like mm-hmm. like so like when i'm playing with an orchestra it's like i'm going to like be so influenced infected by the people around me like mm-hmm. it's it's just going to happen like i could either tr- try to shut it out and it's not and try to be neutral but it doesn't mean that i'm not being affected and it's like with the mm-hmm. pianist or with anyone that you're performing with there's always going to be a sense of like energy exchange and mm-hmm. um, inspiration and and so it's just like, and you experience different things with different performers all the time, like chamber music. It's always going to be a different experience with even the same people playing it, mm-hmm. you know, over, but it's like different people just bring out different things. So I think that's just such a, a great thing too. And, and so it's, it's not really just like your own abilities and ideas coming out. It's like, we're, we're sharing this whole like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a more collaborative thing. Collaborative. And, uh, yeah, as you say, sort of sharing energy with mm-hmm. other performers, I think, is part of what's exciting for us as musicians yes. to be on stage, because you're sort of discovering stuff as it happens on stage, not just with, with what you're doing, but with what other people are doing as well. Mm-hmm. So that that's pretty, that's an exciting thing. It is. Um, I like what you said about if you're playing something multiple times, how you discover new things or that you learn something from one performance that you might take into the next. And I'm thinking about, so you famously went on tour with Lady Gaga in mm-hmm. which you played the same show, I'm assuming, like a hundred times, right? right? So what, that, that's an extreme situation. I like think most classical musicians don't know what that's quite like. So what's the mental space that you get into when you know you're going to do this over yeah. and over and over <laughs> right right exactly mm-hmm. um interestingly enough it's a lot more similar than people might think um i, I found it to be more like m- there's more things i was like oh wow this is like not that different um chamber music you know playing in a band and we rehearse and it's like the same approach you know you have to listen to each other you have to like mm-hmm. react play together and just make sure you're like same articulations if you need to be and all these things um and as, in terms of like just playing the, the show, what is interesting is it depends, I think, on the artist as well. But I, I find that just knowing who like Lady Gaga, like what her sort of like approach as an, a person, as an artist in general, she's so, so, she, she evolves over time, like so much, mm-hmm. you know, like just from when she started. So just knowing that her show evolved, you know, mm-hmm. she didn't really stick to like one sort of thing herself. And so she really just also brought something different and, and the show evolved over time. Like the first show from like the last, again, very different. Like we, like, I think like our first show, we were literally, we didn't have, like, didn't even have a full run through until the, the on stage. Yeah. Wow. So it's kind of like, you know, you're kind of thrown into something and it's, it's scary, but it's like exciting. And you have to just trust, just like with anything, you have to trust each other. You have to like, just mm-hmm. make sure you're really, and we had really good guidance from like music director. And um, so I think it's just really, 
the same idea, you know, playing the show again, you have to keep it fresh somehow, of course, mm -hmm. you have to like find things in your mind and, and just like, um, but it's, it's always like, again, the audience brings so much energy. So that already mm -hmm. like livens it up. Like the moment you're just like on stage, you hear the crowd, like you might've just been like, I'm tired today. Like, you know, I've been traveling, whatever it is, but that moment you're just like, you're on. And it's like, mm -hmm. that, that also gives, brings that as well. So I think it's the whole performance aspect that I love again with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think it's just a lot of things that are very related and, um, yeah, I just found it to be very interesting to kind of see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So when you perform, whether it's with Lady Gaga or chamber music or in front of an orchestra, mm -hmm. are you super aware of the audience as part of the performance? Or do you sort of try to not think about that? Or right. Like, what, what's your, you know, what's your yeah. relationship to the people in front of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think generally there is a, a relationship happening. There's a connection because when I was younger, I like, again, I was, I was super nervous for concerts mm -hmm. and um, I would perform and just feel like I was playing for one person. That's what I mm -hmm. did as a kid. So I'd kind of like, like look at someone or know that there was that particular person out there. And I would literally just be like, I'm playing for that one person right now. And I'm going to play the best performance I can for that one person. They don't know who it is, but mm -hmm. um, so that feeling ha like as a kid. Um, now there's definitely like an exchange happening. Um, I'm not thinking too much about the audience when I'm performing because, you know, like the music, you just really want to focus on, you know, just like being like fully like engaged mm -hmm. with like you know what you're doing but I think it also depends on there's there's many factors like if I'm doing like a rock show or like a improv something like that I'm definitely more aware of like my surrounding because I kind of like mm -hmm. to see even reactions and you know but I think it's like when I'm doing like a concerto or something I really just like I'm focused like on like the orchestra myself mm -hmm. the doctor, and you know like so I think it just really depends. Yeah. 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 So like this, this is making me curious. So what's like the, the strangest or most challenging or most chaotic performance situation you found yourself in? And then how did you sort of gather yourself to get over that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay. So I did a concert, I think in Montreal and it was about the time when I first went to New York to study at Juilliard. <laughs> And I remember that year was like, I was just in New York. I was like, I'm in the city. I want to just like, I was in a different mindset. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, again, that was the first time I was also trying to like play with bands and do other things. So I think I was just so like in immersed in my mind with that, that I think I kind of like, and that was a, the time when I was starting to actually like do more performances again too. Mm -hmm. So I started actually like traveling a bit and I didn't like that I was having to travel like I didn't want to leave New York so I was like oh like I have to actually go and do these concerts which I mean I, I did it and I was like I would enjoy it but I don't think I was like 100% there mm -hmm. to be honest um and looking back that's when you're like oh like that's where you start to see how when you're detached from a bit a bit and, and perspective like you see where like how your journey has led you to where you are Hmm. And where like you, like the focus wasn't there, so the focus was somewhere else, and that's probably why it led me to like a different like direction type of mm -hmm. thing. Oh, anyway, that's a side note. But I was, <laughs> I would just kind of like think at that time I did a concert, and literally I think I was just like learning pieces and playing them. Like I would learn it like the day before, like not oh my the, god, mean, like not the day before, <laughs> but you know what I mean, like till mm -hmm. the day before. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like a week before, and I would be like, okay, I'm totally just gonna try it and so hopefully this works out <laughs> <laughs> I know it's bad um it's it's so that's like the thing that where I feel like I look back at, like I didn't think about it too much I maybe I was blocking it out because I was like I don't mm -hmm. want to think about that then you know but I was like literally just like oh my gosh that's like terrible you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> not very professional but I did that for one like this one particular concert specifically I didn't really do that every time but it was like this one and I think I was like literally on stage kind of like freaking out inside like I was like mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. coming up next I have to like remember exactly like, focus don't ever don't oh, like God. My and this one piece and I think that's where 
um, I was able to get through it. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like so terrible and guilty. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you just feel like that's not the way it should be. Like people, like you know, they wanted to come to this concert and, and I have to give them the best and I didn't. And mm-hmm. it was just like where I was in my life and mm-hmm. I have no mm-hmm. excuse. But mm-hmm. it's just like now looking back, I'm like, oh, that's what the, the situation was. Yeah. So that's like, that's one concert that really stuck with me was mm-hmm. like, and it was kind of a turning point too, because it's like after that point, I think I just never really felt a hundred percent focused on the music on stage. It would be like other things would come into my mind. I'd be distracted. I would be mm-hmm. like self-conscious about like, a lot of things other than the music you know mm-hmm. and like it's your identity like you know as a woman too you're like mm-hmm. oh I, I don't like how i'm looking right now whatever it is like, mm-hmm, shouts mm-hmm. And, stuff like that. and it comes it comes into place and now i'm looking back and going like there's so many things that just you realize in your life that kind of like you know it's like and so i don't know it's just it's a learning that's all i can mm-hmm, do like, it's mm-hmm. a learning experience and you look back but yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, definitely. No, I like how you bring up, you know, as, as women, we being on stage, and I think you have an incredible sense of style. But is that, you know, something that I know I'm of two minds of, like, I like the fact that, you know, we're girls, and we can dress up and look pretty on stage on the by the flip side, you yeah. know, I don't like it when that becomes too much of what we do. So how, how do you think of that balance? I think that if it's something that's authentically you, like, cause I've always like, I, yeah, I've always liked fashion. Like when I was in New York, I think I would like, I didn't like in my mind, I wasn't like, Oh, I'm trying to like be fashionable per se. But mm-hmm. I think I realized that I was, I stood out maybe in at school because like literally people like that I went to school with afterwards, they'd be like, I just remember you were always like has distinct style. And I didn't really mm-hmm. think of it that way. I wasn't like, oh, it's, I'm, I'm really tr- like trying to, or like I wasn't like aware of me. I just was always. So um, having said that, for me, being an artist is, fashion is art, you know? It's, it's mm-hmm. like how you visual, like that's definitely something that I feel, especially I think when you're not someone who is very like extroverted mm-hmm. in just that sort of, one of the things, the ways I express myself is through fashion. And um, so I think that I can only speak for, I think for myself, because like, cause I don't like to, you know, tell people what I think they're, they should, how they mm-hmm. should mm-hmm. be able to express themselves in whatever manner, even if it's something that they're not into. Like if someone says, well, I'm not into that. Like, I don't agree with how you're like, you try to like flaunt yourself or whatever. Cause like, we get, we all get these comments. Like I get, I got comments of like, you know, like it's, it seems like you're just trying to like, you know, show your body or whatever. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really honest. And this is something that I don't like to just try to like have to prove myself or whatnot, but it's like, I, I always say like, it actually frustrates me because a lot of times it's actually that I just physically feel hot. Like I, I get mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. fighting and stuff. So for me, like that was a big factor too, was like, I would literally sometimes just feel uncomfortable. So I would like not wear a clothes for that reason. Just mm-hmm. like, oh. But then people can misinterpret that and think, oh, she's just trying to like show skin. But really it's mm-hmm. like, no, I'm actually just like physically feeling like, you know, like I would like mm-hmm. to be, like I, I actually admire people when I see them like wearing a hoodie and like leggings in like 30, <laughs> like, you know, like I saw mm-hmm. it, the other day, I literally was like, with my mom and, and I was like, I, and right now I just wish I could dress like her. Like, I'm, I'm just so fascinated. I just want to ask her if she's feeling hot or like, you know, <laughs> cause I was like, I'm here like, like, you know, almost sweating and like the heat and it's like, all that to say, yeah. Like, it's one of those things where like, you can be mis con- like construed for like mm-hmm. things. For, and we all, we all get that as women too, you know, like we might have our reasons of like having a certain style or like trying to like, pose a certain way or like have a certain type of uh, image but a lot of it can just be like it stems from so many different things in our mm. life what led to us to that point and so it's like I'm I'm not here to like make any sort of like um like I, yeah so I think it's just like if you're if you do you and you like are yourself like that's all you can do like yeah no I like the sense that it, it is uh, fashion is a huge form of self-expression and you know also considering that 
what you feel comfortable in, you know, in terms of movement or just personal comfort or I don't, for me, I wear super, super high heels and I get comments on them all the time, but I wear them because I feel powerful in them. So it's for me, you know, it's not for everybody else, you know, and if everyone else likes them, that's fine. But yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it's like, it's, it's for you. Like I always say that it's for me. Like, like you might think that it's like for so-and-so, but it's like, I actually, yeah. Like at the end of the day, if you just feel like um, comfortable with yourself and, and like, if that's something that like, you know, it just like gives you a little bit of like happiness or whatever, mm -hmm. like, why not? You know? Yeah, no, it's important. So you recorded an album. Um, and I, I love this because you produced, you sang, you played, you, you did everything. So this is like, that's taking all of this, you know, classical and pop and coexisting to like another level as far as I'm concerned. So where, how were you inspired to do that? And I, I, I was really impressed with me. I was like, holy shit, this Thank is amazing. <laughs> That's so nice. Um, I think it just actually stemmed from feeling like I needed an outlet to express again, to repeat, to keep repeating. But like, I think especially like it happened right after I had, um, finished my first tour with Gaga mm -hmm. I think I was kind of like you know what I love being um in her band and I loved just the whole experience but I actually was like I want to be doing what she's doing right now like I would mm -hmm. literally like if I were to be honest I'd be like that's the ex like the freedom to really express because when you're in a band you obviously are supporting and you're playing and uh, and for a tour actually um particularly in in her tour she actually did give a lot of freedom to the band so there were like solo moments and things like that so that's what also like made it so cool was like I was um like I did like a little like uh set like right in between the songs like I would play like a little bit of something to connect I can, mm -hmm. right now I can't think of the word but like and it would just be like improvised so things like that was something that I was like you know like this is really cool like that were you know given that sort of like creativity mm -hmm. as well um, but I think it was just like being in, in the situation of like, I just have so much that I want to like let out at this point and I'm going to do it as like a, just like, for, again, for me. And mm -hmm. it you was know, I felt like I, it wasn't like, I was trying to do like a solo thing to become this indie artist. Mm -hmm. It was like expression. And then I think it kind of like through that process led me to discover that I wanted to just keep going and, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and progressing with that. And yeah. So. so I like, I think the feeling for me of that album is like, you weren't trying to make a point about something, but it just seemed to be, as you said, sort of a natural expression and extension of your experience and who you are. And, and to me that that's like what I love to hear in an artist is that it sort of, you know, music exists for the purpose of music existing rather than, it needs to do something or be something. And I really love that. And so I love that album that, a lot. That, that too. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so a couple of final questions. So this, the, the six months of pandemicness, I mean, has, has this changed what you do and how maybe you think about what the place of a musician in the world is and what live music means and, you know, all those big questions that we have, you can answer any of those. Yeah. I mean, I think that. In this time, there's definitely like we're all going through it, and um, I feel like it's the it's the one time that I feel like the whole world is kind of like able to really experience something collectively mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and kind of be like, wow, we're really just like all realizing and being able to. I think the the reactions are different from everyone because of you know just the fact that like we're all going to react in a sense that it applies to like what is in our, like how it, ex it, it exists in our lives and how it affects mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I was always, especially in the last like couple of years, I, I felt like it, it wasn't actually a huge um, like shock weirdly enough because mm -hmm. I like kind of like being sort of like on my own a bit and kind of like, hibernating from the world in a sense like yeah um I I just felt like in a way like it just shifted my thinking of like being 
like super just grateful of the fact that like I don't know like just that I was able to still be here and not be really worried about I, I don't know like it's really hard to explain it because I, I didn't really like try to make it a sort of like time for me to reflect on it like trying to um understand it you know mm -hmm. like i'm not trying to understand it. i'm just trying to take it for what it is mm -hmm. and accept it and be grateful because like there's so much suffering out there that like for me it's not like if i had to put, put, remind myself that well, yeah things can be hard but like there like literally are people that are like suffering mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have it so much harder so it's a time where i feel like if anything i'm just like so much more like grateful for each moment and it's a, like I'm, I'm stopped to really like um, just kind of take it in instead of feeling anxious hmm. which is probably the opposite of like what I feel like is sh like in a weird way I feel kind of like I should be anxious or like not hmm. anxious but you know like I should be doing things and try and figure out how what I'm going to do the next my next move and but it's really just more like I'm really feeling like like it has shown me that we don't really and I don't want to sound grim but like we really don't know what tomorrow can bring mm -hmm. and it could be either great or you know it can still be like things that are struck like hard but like it really is like a, a perspective thing where it's like you know there's just so much that um we could be focusing on to think about like what needs to be better as as individuals and also collectively mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's not about like success in the worldly sense it's not about mm, like you know mm -hmm. that's i think that's sort of like what really has you know i always had that approach in my life that like worldly success isn't what brings me happiness actually mm -hmm. but in this case it was proof it was proof mm. because i feel happy i feel like content and it's not because i'm feeling like i'm being successful right now in that mm -hmm. i feel like it's just i feel full because i'm just breathing and i'm alive and i have food and Mm -hmm. and roof over my head and I, like you know it's just like things that you we we don't really we take for granted sometimes mm -hmm. we're so in a rush to just like mm -hmm. try to get the next thing done and then and, and climb up the ladder or whatever it is mm -hmm. so I think it's just really I mean it's very like it's things that we're I'm sure we're all like thinking about and reflecting on but um you know there's so much like I don't know and that's the other thing is like I'm realizing there's so much like I don't know and so I just there's no point in even trying to figure things out <laughs> like, you know? mm -hmm. so that's like because I think there's like in in my um sort of like approach to things I do tend to like kind of try to think what does this mean and what should I do about this mm -hmm. and what's the purpose of that and what's the meaning but I think I've actually done almost the opposite where it's like I don't know and I'm kind of like surrendering to like what is happening and it's okay like mm -hmm. kind of, you know? Yeah, but I don't know <laughs> at the end of the day, right? It's like Yeah, no, but I think that's a, a wonderful way to look at it, sort of surrendering to the experience and being okay with not knowing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, just hearing the rest of your story, it seems like you've gone through a lot of your life having curiosity and seeing where something takes you um, while being true to yourself. And this is, a, I think, an opportunity for all of us to sort of Think about where we're going and, and look look at it with curiosity and with openness and not with fear. And That's even good. if we are shy people, you know, and then just sort of you know, do yeah. our things and, and be able to accept what's out there at the moment. And mm -hmm. that's a that's a really great it's like it's coming from a place of strength, I think, to be able to say, I don't know, and it's okay that I don't know. And, you know, not to face it without fear. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Judy, thanks so much for joining me. It's been yes. so nice chatting with you. It's a, I here. really haven't talked to you for like 16 uh, yeah. years or something, right. which is a lot. Of time. <laughs> but I've been following what you're doing. And it's just, it's great to see, you know, really talented, really great people doing incredible things with their lives and, you know, making a difference and making some great music. So thank you. And I can yeah. see exactly the same t for you. And um, thank you for inviting me and connecting again. It's great to connect. Um, even though it's technology. It's awesome. Yeah, I know. That's been like, I guess the one upside for me in this pandemic is that I've had a chance yes. to talk to a lot of friends that I haven't talked to, you know, right. and connect with them here on Zoom and just, you know, talk and connect and just remind ourselves that we're a big community of musicians and artists. And I love it. Yeah, true. And we make yeah. a difference and we're all there for each other. And I think it's really cool. That's so, so awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Judy. Yeah.
Pleasure. Bye. All right. I'll see you. Bye.